Britain's biggest army garrison, where fresh-faced civilians are transformed into infantry soldiers. In just six months. What's up? What's up with you? Now, with war in Europe, a new generation is heeding the call to arms. It doesn't matter if you're a multi-millionaire or if you've grown up in a council estate, we will turn you into a soldier. Get on there now. People rely on us to do the things that no one else wants to do. Trained by the army's best. This is the future of the British infantry right here. Pile up. Get up! Pitiful. We'll be all over here like a rash from now on. Get behind him! Ooh, man. I'm not going to crawl for you, am I? Hurry up! 45 recruits of D1 platoon face the challenge of their lives. Like Joseph Stalin's taken over and it's a dictatorship. Not all of them will succeed. Who has what it takes to serve as a British soldier? They think they're at Pontins and they'll soon realise that they're not. Why are you bending like that? No! And pass. Happy with that. That was good. Yeah, I'm here for one reason, one reason only. To be a soldier. Whoa! You just shot him. What are you touched the trigger for? This kills people. And you're not thinking about it. If he keeps failing, the next step is potentially getting kicked out of the army. Now, recruits will be expected to put themselves in harm's way. It's like all the air is turned into liquid and you're drowning on it. Who? is prepared to do whatever the army asks of them, no matter what it takes. Thanks very much. So we're coming up to the end of basic training now. This fast and dynamic next couple of weeks, they will get pushed harder, they will get asked more, and hopefully they'll, they'll move outside their comfort zones. It's time that we test them, and if they're not up to the standard and they require retraining, then that's something that we'll send them back to do. Some people won't be up to the standards. The platoon won't all make it to the end of basic training. D1 platoon started the course with 45 recruits. Only 34 remain. Private Josh Hart is on a formal warning and faces being kicked out of the platoon if he doesn't improve. Curtis Dryden had a difficult start, but has begun to impress the training team. Meanwhile, recruit Owen South is resting bang in the middle of the pack. Just so you know, Sal, I've never got hair before. That's fine. Sound. Let me do this first bit. Straight, straight down the middle. You ready? I don't even know how to do this. I've never done this before. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, straight down the middle. I don't really think I strike people as a typical soldier. The glasses. 100% of the clock. You think of a soldier, you never w think of glasses. You've watched Saving Private Ryan, you've never seen a guy with glasses in the army. It started, there's no going back now. I wanted to join the army because it was getting a bit nine to five. I got a job in a warehouse and it, it, was, it was the same thing every day. I want to see things and do things that most people don't get the chance to see. Something amazing, something to write and read about. Oh, I'm like a man. When he was growing up, he was very quiet, very sensitive and quite thoughtful, especially for a teenage boy. So I was quite surprised that this is the career path he's chosen. How's that look? Four. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, it feels weird. I thought, to me, the arm is very aggressive and macho and it's just not him. You look a psychopath now, but... <laughs> I've never been in a fight. I've never been in any sort of conflict. If something did happen, I just hope the training kicks in and I get that gut feeling of what I need to do and what needs to be done. I think I've gone full psycho. Did you call yeah. a special? Or not yet, not yet. I'll give it a minute. I'll, I'll let it set in. It does make you question if you've got what it takes. Right, Kate, listening. Today you will be exposed to a simulated gas. 
Being in the infantry, recruits have to be prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice and put their lives on the line. Gas, gas, gas! Today's test, a simulated chemical attack. Despite being against the Geneva Convention, chemical warfare is something the recruits must be prepared for. Does she get strapped on underneath? Right, 50 50, check each other over. Over the last 10 years, gas has been used to kill thousands in the Syrian conflict. What? Well, it's meant to save your life. All right, so, yeah, if it fucking gives you a bit of a sore chin, then I. When have you ever had anything that's comfortable in the army? <laughs> fucking weirdo. For protection, recruits have a customised respirator with twin canisters. The self-sealing valves prevent chemical contamination for up to 24 hours. Let's go, let's, the recruits let's. must enter a room which will be filled with gas. Although non-lethal, the gas restricts the airways, making it difficult to both see and breathe. In a chemical attack, it can take less than 10 seconds for a person to be overwhelmed. Okay, so move your respirator, name like number. Next, the recruits must remove their respirator, stay calm, and state their details within the nine second reaction window. Your name, right, and number. Dryden. Montreal. Dryden. Halandra. Uh, Dryden, three zero, three seven six two two nine. Come on, come on, come on. What else? I feel a bit nervous going on the front line. Because you just know you're about to lose your life. Like, that's what's going to be in the back of everyone's head. Like, you probably are going to lose your life. I can't see. Right, right just stand still. It's right. That's what it is. You like, you face your fears in here, you, and you break your fears. You, that's it. I'll be over soon. To me, I hate my. I don't touch it. Don't touch it. The bomb two straps your respirator. Name, right number. All I'm thinking is how long I can hold my breath for before I breathe in any of the gas, and then, as as I take my first breath, I'm like, shit, this was a terrible idea. <coughs> Come on, name, name, name. <coughs> <laughs> it's like all the air has turned into liquid and you're drowning on it. You not enjoying that? No, Corporal. Yeah, hard going. Well, you can't breathe at all. Yeah. Remain <sighs> right hand number. Private heart. Private Heart, 3 37 Some recruits, like Private Heart, are able to cope better than others. Hopefully I don't get gassed. <laughs> it could happen, it's a possibility, but I don't really think about it. How was that for you? Oh, shit. Yeah, don't oh. touch your eyes, don't touch your mouth. Right. Probably should start thinking about it, though. Open your eyes, you rocket. You can't see. <laughs> Open your eyes. Start blinking. Blink. Your face on fire. Well, you take off a respirator. Are you fucking breathing? If it obviously ain't that bad, all of a sudden it fucking hits you. Fuck. <laughs> and you think it's gonna build up, but the second you take your mask off and you take your first breath, it's just immediately. You can't breathe at all. And oh, you feel so sick. It's terrible. Don't touch him. All right. The thought of this could happen to me, I could go somewhere that where this happens, it's a bit scary, honestly. It's a bit it's a bit of a daunting idea that, you know, this this sort of thing is gonna fuck you up. War is no picnic. So no one knows how they're gonna to react to that situation unless they find themselves in that situation, but it's an environment that we train to thrive in. I've been on seven operational tours now, which means there have been seven extended periods where I could have came into harm's way. 
but ultimately that's the, the consequence that comes of serving uh, with the British Army. Bye, uh, left march. Left, right, left. Left, left right, right. Left, right, right. Get it together. Shit every day, and then some days it's all right. Yeah. I think the best thing I've had from it is a chicken tikka, but it gave me heartburn after every bite I had, so... <laughs> after leaving his job in a fast-food restaurant to join up, 21-year-old Private Hart is desperate to make a success of his army career. The army means a lot to me. It's something that I've always wanted to do. When I was, like, 17, I was getting into fights. I, I was going down the wrong path. I, I, I don't know where I would have ended up. Yeah, we have got to go. Yeah. I need the structure in my heart. Keep myself out of trouble, so I'm not leaving. Not they'd have to drag me out of here, really. But after accidentally firing his weapon at another recruit, Private Hart was reprimanded and placed on a formal warning. The training team will now be watching his every move. Oh, oh dear. Unlocked. Oh, unlocked. I think Private Hart's taken on board that it's getting more serious. You can see the potential, but he just keeps seeming to make mistakes. I put him warnings to try and give him a wake-up call. I've given him extra training, and I'm just at the point where I feel like I'm banging my head against the wall with him. Each recruit is issued kit valued at over £3,000. So, when a recruit's locker is left unsecured, it is considered a lapse in the most basic of standards. Uh, Private Hart left all his lockers open, so... All the contents of his lockers are in this little man that we've just made. Well, next time, he'll lock his lockers. Hopefully. I'm gonna teach him a lesson, which he should have already learned. I'll do it. There is quite a bit of pressure. It's more... You get more pressure off the corporals and anything. So obviously they want you to pass out, so you do get a lot of pressure in it. But you just gotta keep going. Right, you have to sort this out in a bit. <coughs> oh, it's because my locker was left open. Every month, a new group of recruits arrives at Catterick to start their training. If a recruit doesn't meet the standard within their platoon, they are transferred out to redo training. This is called back classing. Right, when you ready. Corporal, I'm pre zero, pre zero. Yeah, Private Hart is a candidate for being back classed, and his performance is under scrutiny. Obviously, we haven't had a great module this module, OK? Um, I'll read you what I've put. Private Hart has had a poor module. He's consistently been picked up for administration throughout this course so far. Private Hart consistently gets picked up on ranges for weapon drills. He has been given chance after chance and clearly has the wrong attitude. Private Hart is below the standard expected, OK? What I will ask, get a grip of your weapon handling. Administration. All right, get on top of it, because it's all that's going to do is drag you back and give you problems further on the course, all right? So you've got some catching up to do, all right? Just stay in here. Hopefully you can turn it around and rectify the problems that have been highlighted. Thank you very much, Hart. No, of course. Cool. That one doesn't look too bad. Just need to do the insert pump sword, is it? There is things that I do need to work on, and I know that myself. And they've told you that you're on that warning. you just got to keep your head on and make sure you're doing everything that they're telling you. I'm just going to listen, basically, try my hardest in everything I'm doing. But obviously, I've just got to keep at it, because I've not done enough yet. This is the GPMG, automatic belt-fed weapon. I've been fucking talking about this since the first three weeks. Since we touched the rifles, I was like, fuck these shitty rifles. I want the gun. 
the belt fed 7.62 millimeter general purpose machine gun or gpmg for short is a mainstay of the british army capable of firing 100 rounds per minute and with a maximum range of 800 meters larger and more difficult to control than the rifle recruits must learn to handle its heavy recoil I mean, everyone joins the army to, to fire big guns. And at this level for them, the GPMG is probably the biggest gun they can fire. Having a big belt of 200 rounds and your target that's 600 metres away and, and firing, firing rounds at it is, is probably what they signed up to do. Only those that can pass the GPMG test will be allowed to operate one in the field and take on the coveted role of machine gunner. GPMG is cool as fuck. That's why I like it. I ain't about all that, you know, marksman and that. I can't shoot for shit. My weakness, it fixes it. Fucking 10 rounds down range, don't need to aim. Well, do need to aim, but you get what I mean. Today is a practice shoot in preparation for their test, where they will need to score a 60% hit rate. One five round first, 100 metres. Couple. I get nervous all the time. I'm always worried I'm gonna do something like wrong or stupid. Outside. Where the fuck are you shooting? Shooting the pigeons. You need to fucking tighten it up, get it in the shoulder, get it fucking snug. Awful. You were around the landing there. You hit the ground in front of it as well. Look how low are you? Oh, you can't see the target really, can you? Huh? Yeah, I can see it. Alright then, let's see how fucking well you do then. Go on then. Yeah, fuck me, that was I. I don't think a gun is life is for you, so. Maybe not. Thank you, Corporal. Doing dog shit. Man, we've got a week. I'll get better. I hope. Uh, say, Dunny scores. I'll go back to front then. So. Just fucking all over the shop. Just fucking terrible. You can't even talk about yours. Private South has struggled to keep control of the heavy weapon, failing to score anywhere near the 60% accuracy that is required. Glad we have to get the I was fucking hoping I'd do well and stuff, and I did the worst. Which is shit. Although, if we're in a forest, I could cut down every tree very well. Fucking just shred the whole thing. I don't need to aim. It's a machine gun. If he has any hope of becoming a specialist machine gunner in the army, he will need to drastically improve before the official test in just six days' time. Right, left. Right, right, right. Oh, hi. You all right? You all right? Oh, you all right, dude? What have you been up to? Not much. Went to the ranges. You yeah. have no idea what that means, do you? That means we use the guns. We did use the guns. Use the machine guns. You all right, Mum? Um, bit of shit, bit of shit. I don't know. It's the, it's the GPMG, right? I, I'm like, I can do all the drills and stuff. I just can't aim for shit. Did you put your glasses on? Hmm? Yes, I have my glasses on. Okay, but I thought you were really looking forward to that. Yeah, I was looking forward to it. It's fun and all. I'm just a bit shit. I can't aim. I just need more practice, I think. What happens if you don't pass it? Oh, you don't get qualified on it. But, but what would you have to do with them in real life? I don't really think about you don't really think about that. I was watching some documentary and it was saying nine times out of ten you never even see the enemy. I think a lot about the implications of what they're being trained to do. I'm essentially a pacifist, so it it sits a bit heavy on me sometimes. In conflict, I think if there's a loss of life, it doesn't matter whose side it's on, does it? It's it's tragic. No, I guess. Don't get me wrong, I want him to go out and explore the world you know, and live the best life he possibly can. I think this is, um, this is a dangerous way to do it. Don't forget there's nothing that can't be solved with a cup of tea and a chat. A diplomatic tool, a cup of tea. You know how I feel about it. It is what it is, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so my mum, she's like, oh, if everyone just laid down their weapons and, like, just had a chat about their problems and, like, sorted it out, sorted it out, like, ne negotiated stuff. And I'm just sitting, I don't know. I don't know what you meant to say to that. 
Like, the world isn't like that, is it? It's like, it'd be nice. It'd be like a dream if the world was like, was like that. But I guess it's just not, you know. You just gotta sort of deal with that sometimes. Let's just crack on in, in sections as we usually do. The training team meets regularly to assess recruits. He's lethargic. Does everything slow paced. Yeah. His discipline is poor in all aspects. He still doesn't cut his toenails. His damn fucking things haven't grown that quick in two weeks. Yeah. They're literally curling around his toes now. So, he's average in age. I mean, he does, does what he does well, but he doesn't do much more. Mm. Bottom of the top third. Private Hart has been trying to improve his discipline. Private Hart is on it. The commands warning for various things. He's continuously making the same mistakes. Whenever he's caught out with something, there's always an excuse. Um, it's constantly his discipline in the field is poor. In module three, I might be trying to backlash him. Silly mistakes. One of the recruits who is starting to show real potential is 21-year-old Private Dryden. Dryden. Uh, Dryden's good. He's growing on me. He's, yeah. So in the field, Dryden's really good. Yeah. And he's, he's fit as well. Like, the effort he puts in and things like that. But like it just takes him ages to get things, but once he's got it, he's fine. The platoon is heading out into the field for two days and nights. A testing exercise of endurance. Good day, one. Braving the elements in freezing temperatures, they will be challenged to confront the realities of being a soldier. Hurry up, get your ponchos up. All right, get your fucking beer guns under, underneath your ponchos because we need to start building up the sentry positions, OK? Hurry up. Let's go. It's not physical, because we've already done the physical part, and it's more mental. Just telling yourself, can you still work? Can you stay? Can you soak the weather? Private Dryden didn't make the grade as a professional footballer, and is hoping the army can offer him a new career. It's really important for me to like, pass out on this, which I know for a certain 100% fact I will pass out on it, because I've just come here to change my life, basically. I want to travel the world as well. And like, what other job could you do that for? Like, free, not many. Yeah, two ponchos will fit. Trust me, I've done it before. Dryden's come on miles. Like, when he first rocked up, I couldn't... He was the class clown. We need to go on this tree, remember? We need to be facing outwards. And at the minute, I can't fault him. Like, he's shown loads of potential. <laughs> OK, you might have noticed you're all shivering now. That's because you've been hunkered down in your bashes. If you were out and about and weren't hunkering under your bashes, you'd actually be fine. So we'll conduct navigational exercise, otherwise known as a navex. The infantry can be deployed into many dangerous and hostile environments. Use that route you just came down. OK, happy? Yes, yep, yes, happy. Yes, sir. Cool, two hours, yeah? Yes, sir. Recruits must master a series of survival techniques, including navigation, to stand a chance of becoming a successful soldier. Time now is 16.26, so by 18.26, I want you back here. Get out of my house. Yes, sir. Split into pairs and working against the clock using only a map and a compass, they must follow a nine-kilometre route through a series of checkpoints. They have been told that if they hit the main road, they'll be out of bounds. Bearing, distance, direction, go. Testing both their teamwork and navigational skills, recruits only have a two-hour window to complete the challenge and get back to base. I've used a map before. Like, I've used maps in like, shopping malls and these zoos and all that and theme parks and that. Like... Yeah, yeah, this is it. And straight, is it? I would use Google Maps <laughs> if if I was going somewhere new, just because Google Maps is perfect. I think that is it, yeah. Cause and then it goes left the, on there. And then goes right and goes yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do have to cross the field. 
do it. Favourite thing I've done so far is with the exercise. When you've got all the kit on, you feel like a soldier. It's more the reason to start acting like one as well. Beautiful day for it, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this morning I thought, fuck's sake. But now I've embraced it, so it's alright, so just got to keep, keep moving, stay warm, keep your blood circulating. Private Dryden and his partner are making good progress. First checkpoint. While some of the other recruits aren't faring so well. Which way are we, which yeah. way are we going? Oh, In so. fact, one team is completely off the map. Left. Left? Yeah. You sure? No, but we'll go for it anyway. I think we're lost. Look, you're the one who did the bearings. You don't even have the fucking compass out. What do you mean? No! How have they let us in the army? Oh, lost! I'm left here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Loving it. So, last checkpoint, back to the tent now. Sergeant said we were quite fast, didn't it? We've done this within an hour, and he said the target's an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, Private Dryden and Private Cottons. Yes, sir. 17. 28. How long did we do that? Eh? Did it in 98 minutes. Not bad. Well done. Smashing the target by 22 minutes. Private Dryden has got the best time in the whole platoon. I'm happy. I'm really happy. Like, I just I just keep improving and improving. It's filled, isn't it? it just keeps getting better. So and every time it gets better, you enjoy yourself more. Get away, you crow. Private Dryden came back a lot more confident. I think he's quite, uh, he lacks self-confidence, so now he's more confident in his navigating, he's done some routes, and he's constantly learning, so those little wins for him are clearly important, so he'll just keep on improving and improving, and hopefully stay with the course. I fucking hate it. It's freezing, man. It's made my third of fuck. A month sent me. Basically, I have to sit here for an hour or two. Keep a lookout at all times. As night falls, the temperature drops below zero. I think the snow's making it so much harder. Of like, course it is. Yeah, my... When you're in a blizzard and you're trying <laughs> Fucking clean your rifle. <laughs> clean your fucking rifle anything. while your face is being absolutely pelted. I can't wait to fucking get home and be away from this fucking weapon system. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nothing but a nuisance. Definitely feel myself changing, like, a lot. Like, my mindset's a lot stronger as well. I'm starting to switch on and, like, doing things that I didn't think I could do. Who's beaten? Put your hands up if you're beaten. Imagine, right now, you were born in a different country. Say you were born in Ukraine right now, you'd be fighting the Russians, wouldn't you? I guarantee you it's cold in Ukraine. Why can't they sack it? People are relying on them. People rely on us to do this job. People fucking rely on the British Army, more specifically the infantry, to do the things that no one else wants to do. That's what you signed up for, so that's what we'll do. We train hard, and when we actually do it, we'll fight easy. Any questions? OK, let's have a good night tonight. Tomorrow evening, we can all sleep in beds. I'll see you in the morning. This has been the, the worst weather I've ever been in. OK, it's not cold in Ghana. No, it's not cold. Uh, I think the, the lowest you get, you get in Ghana is 18 degrees. 18? Yeah, 18. 29-year-old Jerry Ochery left his home in Ghana to join the army. Have you ever seen this night before? Oh, this is my first time. It, it, it looks great, but I didn't want to experience it this way. I wanted to be at home, look into the window and see the snow, but here I am. He's one of five <laughs> recruits from the Commonwealth, training to become soldiers in D1 platoon. I'm trying to speak like the English guys, I would say water bottle, but here I would say they say water bottle. <laughs> yeah, so I've been, I've been learning bit by bit. I was, I was shivering like a wet chicken. <laughs> Coming here, 
is that of course people don't get this opportunity and sitting here in, in the army is one of the greatest things that I've put my, my family's name on that mark. Yeah. I'm sat there on sentry, just with my rifle, not doing anything. But when I was sat there, I sort of felt a sense of purpose. I'm helping people, I'm protecting like my brothers in arms. Just sat there in that pit, and it was great. Today, the platoon is preparing for the most important inspection of the course. It inspects everything, literally everything. Everyone's rushing about getting ready. Probably the biggest inspection we've had. The company commander, Captain Gardner, and company sergeant major Newton are coming to inspect them. A test that every recruit needs to pass if they want to progress. Today we're off to D1's lines, where we're going to inspect the recruit. They should be extremely nervous. Yeah, we slept in our sleeping bags last night, so our beds didn't get creased. It's definitely a lot more pressure. What's the um, repercussion for not? I've already told them. They feel it, they feel it. If they can't get it done by now, that's it. They'll learn the hard way. Yeah, I literally don't know what else I can do. Do you show? Already on a warning. It's an important day for Private Hart. I know I'll be all right, because there's nothing literally wrong with it. But yeah, I'm sorted. The recruits' performance today will reflect on the whole platoon, and more importantly, the training team themselves. We've got a T1 ready for your inspection. Let's go. This is my boss coming in uh, and seeing the work that we do. And 100%, this platoon is a reflection on, on the training team. Two, three up. Go up. Two, three down. See that? That's all water out of your water bottle. I know you've washed it out, but make sure you dry it out. Sir. Why do we need discipline? Uh, it helps us carry out our duties without question, sir. Well, we like you to question stuff. Uh, we should question our orders, sir. Yeah. Well, if they're like lawful and stuff. Depends how poor they are, doesn't it? You'll get good orders, I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Good morning, sir. I am 30376229, Highlander Dryden. Where are you from? I'm from Yorkshire, sir. Yorkshire? OK. <laughs> OK, well done. Thank you, good sir. Good effort. Stand at ease. One, one. One. <coughs> that was incredibly stressful. And they were all just looking over us, like watching us. It's like watching sharks roam about. Yeah. Next up for inspection. Private Heart. Sir, I'm Private Heart. Huh. Have you had someone look over your kit beforehand? Uh no, sir. Do you know why I know that? Yes, sir. Turn about. <laughs> you're missing a loop about your trousers. Yeah, no, it's not no, acceptable sir. for my inspection, is it? No, yeah? sir. Right, okay. Good fucking start, isn't it? Right, stand to no, attention. Sorry, sir. It's dirt in your magazines. Got rust on your BFA. Like you've just failed that inspection. Yeah, the fact that you can't even do a loop in your trousers. Yeah, before my inspection is unacceptable, isn't it? Book your ideas up. Private Hart is one of a small group who fail the inspection. There will be consequences. A lot of silly mistakes. What's going wrong? We can't micromanage you. We have to be able to trust you to follow an instruction, go away, and then have carried out that instruction. End one of you, out the other. Yeah, why are you making all these mistakes? Like, we've, we've had that chat, haven't we? Is the pace too quick? Um, I, I think it might be that, so, yeah. So obviously, it's my first time working towards an actual goal, goal, like a, one that's going to affect me for the rest of my life, so... 
it is horrible. It's what? really serious. <laughs> you you're not helping yourself. I oh, know, sir. I think so. It's really frustrating for Private Hart because he's to this standard in terms of soldiering, but discipline and attitude is a huge part of him infantrying. Again and again, has made silly mistakes, but we've actually tried to bring him on and create a change in him. And I think he's changed somewhat, but I think there's still more work to do. Despite the best efforts of the training team, Private Hart hasn't done enough to warrant coming off his platoon commander warning. Captain Gardner calls Lieutenant Wahab to a meeting. What do you think? Let's go. Private Hart, who was on a platoon command's warning, unfortunately it hasn't worked. And this morning, it's just the straw that broke the camel's back. So the recommendation from the training team is that, that we go for a back class. I, I, I get your concerns. So he's scraping through at the minute? Yeah. Right. Also present is the commander of another platoon of recruits on the infantry training course. I don't think there's enough there to back class him. I think he comes to you. Are, are you happy with that? Yeah? I'll take him. So when we come back from leave, yeah. he moves to you. So give him a chance to, to fit into two platoon, mm -hmm. sort himself out. We'll give him the benefit of the it's doubt. It's just the discipline system doesn't seem to be working with him. So yeah, yeah. moving him away from his friends. Yeah, like, happy days. So give him a fresh start. Hart has narrowly avoided being sent back to repeat part of the course. Instead, he will be given extra encouragement and a fresh start in another platoon. Yeah, come in. Shut the door. Shut, shut the door behind you. Okay. Uh, stand at ease. I'll shut this door. Right. I'll cut straight to it. We're going to move you platoon. It will give you a fresh start. You need to go in and make the best first impression that you can. Yes, sir. That's the attitude you need to have. Yes, sir. In my opinion, you got away with it very, very loosely, all right, because uh, you've burnt your bridges with everyone in this training team. Me and Cottle White uh, were wanting to get you back class because of the failures that you've been shown towards the service. You need to put your, put your finger at your arse, young man. Yes, sir. Get on with it, all right? Yes, sir. Happy? Yes, sir. Cool. Mate. Right, any final questions? No, I just want to say I'm sorry to Lord. obviously you and the training team for being such a twat, basically. Well, the only way you can make it up to us is by passing out. Salute, fall out, and then... That's what it is. Get yourself attention. Yeah. Um, Go on. With immediate effect, Private Hart will move platoon. He must say goodbye to his friends and continue his training with a different group. We'll be, like, pretty sad to not be with these, like, well, when we leave, it's about just building a new image of myself on a fresh start, so it's a good thing. Confronting the realities of war is an important part of the infantry training course. Today, the recruits are on their way to the National War Arboretum in Staffordshire. This is a fucking memorial, yeah? It's not just an out -er trip, yeah? It's where people come to fucking pay respects. Don't just fuck them all. What this is, in a nutshell, is 150 acres, 30,000 trees, and 300 memorials worth of thank you for your service. The big golden hug for you lot. Casualty figures from Goose Green. 18 killed, 66 wounded, yeah? 18 names written in stone, not 84 names for one reason because of the balls out effort of every man's mate, giving him first aid and kazivacking him down Darwin Hill. Simple, isn't it? Yeah? 18 names, not 84. Because of the efforts of some blokes on a windswept hill in 1982. That's the difference that you can make to an outcome. The human being can do some amazing things when put under pressure with the right training, yeah, the right skills. Air Force, Navy, Air Force. Is that? 
1955. What is the most recent one then? I went to Afghanistan in 2010. I was only a young lad, 19, so it was, it was obviously hard going. Whilst in Afghanistan, one of Corporal Dean's fellow soldiers lost his life. Here we are, is Yeah. Seen if he was actually up there, and he is. He died on tour when I was on tour in Herrick 13, 2011. You see people all the time get injured and people may lose their lives, but you join to fight for your country. I mean, that's what you're out there to do when you join, so, yeah. Good friend. Gentle giant's the way he was. Yeah, definitely liked by many. He was uh, there when I sort of first rocked up in battalion, and he was happy just to take anybody under his wing and just kind of look after them in a sense. He was a good lad. Were you there when he...? Yeah. ก็ริตาวากุมิดาสิเตรุอะอิสกะนะอาสินะตีนะโมสิกิเตอิกิเนซุโกไซกินามะโกโตเรตาการะมุสินานานิยามิตะกะตะกานายุโนกะกะเด
zero, zero. Like the sort of thing they're looking for to get you in like the top third of the platoon. So, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully a pass. If he is to achieve his dream of becoming a machine gunner, Private South must pass this test. Recruits need to show accuracy and control to prove that they can suppress the enemy. To pass, they need to achieve a hit rate of 60% at distances ranging from 200 meters up to 500 meters. Okay, listen in everywhere. With a belt of 20, 20 rounds. Load. Private South takes up his position. Five three second exposures at regular intervals. Watch and shoot. Two buffs at the target. Take your time, you were told, and you're fucking blattering the ball off. After a difficult first round, South, in lane two, must get his nerves under control if he's going to make the cut. One of the marksmanship principles is um, relaxation. So pretty much just let your body loose and then you're breathing. You've got to slow it down and control it. As you breathe, you can see the sight moving up and down. So you've got to choose a moment in your breathing cycle where you know you're going to be dead on target and you hold it there for a second and then you fire and then you continue. Man, so we're round. Roger. Three bells to 20. Lead two, you passed, everybody else is firing again. <laughs> so then my shotgun's clear. Well done, South. Just, just South. Everybody else, there we are. Private South is the first recruit in his group to pass the test, scoring a 61% <laughs> hit rate. <laughs> How are you feeling about that, South? Thank fucking God, Corporal. I thought I did shit as well. The fucking legs on the bipod were fucking slipping. I guess it feels like it's a part of, you know, what soldiering is about, being confident on different weapon platforms and stuff. So it's nice to have it, like, squared away, like, being confident in using it and knowing you, that you can use it. Yeah, so uh, last week wasn't doing too well. Uh, but over the weekend and coming into now, he must have done something. He sort of clicked on his head and he's managed to sort of pull it the bag today, so at least he's got a pass. Yeah, fucking gleaming. We're about to conduct a deliberate attack. The main difference now is we're going to the enemy uh, and we're taking the fight to the enemy. The recruits are out on a dawn raid. Test that will call on all of their skills and training they have learnt so far. No signs of life here yet. There's been no movement from the enemy positions. The platoon will attack an abandoned farmhouse where five enemy soldiers lie in wait. The whole platoon is involved, split into four sections, each with a crucial role to play. Private South will be at the front in four section, led by Corporal White. While you're here, there's a lot of self-doubt, you know. You go to bed and you're thinking, am I good enough? Did I do well enough today? The enemy is played by trained soldiers, firing blank rounds at the recruits to keep the scenario as real as possible. Everyone wears a laser detection system that registers if they kill or have been killed. Psst. Enemy, enemy, enemy. Hey, 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 look at me, you fucking hitter. Oi! This attack is a chance for Private South to prove himself to the training team and show he can cope with the pressures of battle. Three section and out with five support. Two section are in front of us, they can be first assaulted. So we'll follow them up through the valley and start taking the buildings, OK? First stage of the attack involves Private South's four section, who must attack the building from the left flank whilst the other sections provide cover. 
pre-section. Rapid fire onto fucking enemy positions now. Go. Hey, enemy positions. Hey, keep eye out for friendly forces coming, moving right to left. Friendly forces moving right to left. Friendly forces move right, right to right. left. Let's go. Let's go. Corporal White has spotted the enemy. Halfway through that wall, there's a fucking hole. Muzzle flash coming from that hole. Okay, that's the enemy position. We're gonna go fucking left flanking. Delta, stay here. Charlie, let's go. He's tasked Private South and his section to clear the position. Move. Go firm, go firm! I see the enemy. It's like not even a thought, like I don't even think about it. My rifle just raises up and I put two in his chest. And like, fucking hell, I just got a kill. Right, take that position. I guess it's important to consider what we might be doing in the end. We are in the army and we fight wars and in wars people die and you kill people. But I don't think it's something you should strive towards or hope to do. I think it's just something you should accept that you might have to do. We are extracting now over. This is now objective view all clear. The compound's clear of enemy. There's five enemy dead. From my point of view, the mechanics were good. There's, there's low level stuff. But you've got to remember this is their first time doing it. And I'm sure this has given them a huge amount of confidence. On the whole, it did pretty well. So I've had one kill so far, because I've seen one enemy. <laughs> um, went over the bank, and just straight away when I saw him, I just locked on, fired two, two, three rounds. It'd be wrong to say it feels good, because you know, it's a bit, bit messed up. But it feels, it's nice to see that you can add to the team and that. Like you feel like you could actually save someone's life there or something like that. I just feel confident in myself if I know what I'm doing. You know, I feel confident I can do it, I don't need to look to anyone. I'm not the best, I know that. But I feel like I'm getting better. So maybe at some point I'll feel like a soldier, but not, not quite. I really like Private South. He's a team player, so he'll do things in the background for his team doesn't care if we know about it or if we uh, don't know about it. Seems to do the basics well, which is all we ask with the recruits. Seems to take pride in his appearance and um, what he does and how that reflects on him and his section. After completing this crucial training phase, the recruits now face a formal performance review. He's a show. He's all about ego. That ego needs stripping. He's the fittest in the platoon. He's a good lad, very enthusiastic, but there ain't much between his ears. His admin's terrible, his attitude's pretty poor as well. He's confident, but sometimes a little bit too confident. Bordering on the line of cocky. Each recruit will learn their fate, but have they done enough to pass? Right. So, Private South is a strong module. You know, it's a massive improvement in South as both a person and soldier. The effort he puts into everything he does is great to see. Right, Private South is a well-liked, confident and capable member of the section. Do you agree with that? Oh, uh, yeah. I put you in the top yeah. third of the section. So we all, we all know it's you really well. Um, just need to maintain that level now. Then you probably will come quite high in the platoon. Cool. Okay. Would you agree or disagree with any of that? No, I'm happy with that. Yeah? Yeah. Corporal White calls in Private Dryden. Okay. As you can see here, yeah, yeah, you haven't got anything below the standard. Everything's to the standard, and your effort is above standard. Okay. Private Dryden has had a good module. He does still get picked up for his admin in camp, but it does keep getting less and less. Okay, you seem to have massively, massively improved. Private Dryden is all over his personal skills and drills. He just needs to remember to be situationally aware. 
private riding has come on leaps and bounds since the start of the course. Consistently puts effort in everything he does and improves even if it's just by a tiny amount every day. Private riding is above the standard in some areas and he will at this rate pass the course. Happy with that? Yes, can't look. Okay. You don't look very happy about that. No, I'm sorry. I'm okay. You sure? Aye. You're tired? Yeah. You have a hard day yesterday, did you? Just got one. Have you got a report? Just got one. Good. Cheers. I'll have a happy one. I've been trying to come for years and I just haven't came and I finally came and proved everyone wrong because everyone didn't think I was going to, but I have. Loads of people wouldn't try and join me. I can't fault them for not joining because it is a bit of a nightmare. Like, like who wants to get about half, like five o'clock every day and just fucking go and sleep in fields, go without your phones and social media and all that. Eat rations and be starving half the time. It's not nice, but it has to be done, so this is the life I want. So I've chosen. <laughs> All the recruits have passed their reviews and are now free to head home on leave. Right, from the right number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The recruits have returned to training. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 28, 29, 31, last man sergeant. Last man sergeant. But one recruit is missing. Private Dryden has failed to report for duty. Morning, Dryden. Listen, I understand this is the last place you probably want to be right now, but we need to get you back. If we leave it like this, you'll end up being on a ledge for you. And that'll be you, finished with the army. You're just making things ten times worse. So basically, Dryden's not come back into work today. Left the voicemails, text him, no sign of Dryden. He's failed to, he's failed to report and, he, and he's just decided not to come in. He won't be classed as able as of Wednesday. And then um, if he gets stopped by the police, there'll potentially be a warrant out for his arrest. There's no answer on the phone. The phone number's disconnecting, guys. I've not got a clue what's going on. I've got to phone his mum now. I've got his mum's number off the, off the HR and see if I can get a, a wee bit of a steer as to what, what, this, what, this, what the crack is. I'll keep you updated. Right, I've got to phone Bryden's mum. Yeah. Well, it sounds like she's out of the country. Dryden is nowhere to be found. If he doesn't report in within 48 hours, he will be declared AWOL, absent without leave. Of course it's disappointing that I put that much effort into training him. Um, seen such a change in him from the, when he started, but I won't dwell on it. I don't have time to dwell on it. <laughs> We've got enough stuff going on here. Got all the other recruits to think about. Um, my own life, if he wants to throw it all the way in, throw it down the drain, that's his. It's up to him. Basic training is done. We now get harder. I'm driving. He's been able now for, for well over a week. Radio silence. I heard a thing of him. None of them bites the dust. Straight and move! Straight and move now! Some people don't handle too well under pressure. I may be one of them people. One section, three section, four section. Whoa, 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 whoa. Losing control of your emotions is not an option. She's on thin ice. <laughs> 